Okay. Uh, thank you, Angela. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. You can use without the mic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can click for you. Okay, sure. okay. Uh, just a quick show of hands. Uh, who's worked in corporates more than five years? Corporates. Yeah. Okay, great. So, like many of you, I, I've been in corporate for eight years, and um, I used to come to work every day, and uh, instead of working, I used to daydream, right? So, what what did I daydream about? I daydream about Oh yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I used to dream, daydream about uh, creating a very big company and becoming very successful. And just like Mr. DiCaprio over here, I thought my life was going to be like this, all the way up. Jokes aside, though, between working and daydreaming, I actually uh, worked on a, a lot of ideas, a new new ideas, startup ideas. Sorry. And for the last three years, especially on weekends and after work, I used to uh, meet my partners and you know create the startup ideas that I wanted to make. And in March 2013, I created Venerific. By chance, six months later, my, my boss at the time, he actually uh, announced that the team was going to be made redundant. So I was like, wow. The first thing I thought about was Leonardo, right? It's like, you know, I want to resign. Give me the money. <laughs> so I resigned. So this, in this slide, oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, yeah. cool. This slide, um, you can see uh, different stages. From what I think is different stages of entrepreneurship, starting from the monkey, becoming a soldier, and then finally a Jedi. Obviously, I was still in this stage. And if I show you the next slide, you can see why. That's right. After I receiving the money, the first day, I went to party. And, <laughs> and I did it for three months straight. Three to four days a week, right? You can imagine the amount of hangovers that I got during that three months. So when I quit my job, I did a calculation. I can actually survive one year with this payout, doing, doing my business. But I spent it in three months. Sorry, I still have three months left, sorry. So I spent nine months worth of cash in three months. Can you guys imagine spending nine months worth of cash in three months? How much is that? It's pretty comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of drinks. <laughs> so it comes to the next slide where it's a battlefield. Why did I choose this slide, right? So you can see there, there's Prince Lila. There is a alien Jedi over here. And next to the alien Jedi, there's a dead guy on the floor. Basically, in business, if you have no experience and no knowledge on how to do business, you can, you can die. It's quite cruel out there, you know? <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. So get a mentor. Get someone that can protect you instead of jumping straight into business. But unfortunately, that's not what I did. I jumped straight into business, and I did a Han Solo. So I want to talk about some of the experiences that I had um, during the journey of the three years doing Venerific. After three months, you know, I sobered up finally. I realized, like, hey, I only have three months worth of cash. What do I do? Um, no traction. There was only a little bit of traction. The product is there. So I decided, OK, I'm going to look for partners that knows how to do events. And I'm going to invite event organizers who plan events to attend this event. I'm going to make money from it. Great idea, right? So finally, I found this guy, and um, he looks quite you know, sleek, wearing his suit all the time. And he said, oh, I've been organizing events for four years, uh, very big events, and uh, I can help you. So we went on. We did the events. First event was successful. Second, third, and then fourth. But there was a problem. He started giving me all the work. So by the end of the fifth event, I was doing 90% of the work. So we ended the partnership, right? So we shook hands, and we became buddies. And then one fine day, he came to my office, and he said, hey, how you doing? Good, good. Ricardo, you know what? I have a brilliant idea for you. 
I've been working in the business world for four years, database of 10,000. I can pass this to you. It's like, wow, this guy is super nice. He must be really feeling really sorry because of the partnership. So I was like, okay, well, what do you want to return? He's like, oh, just, you can, we can swap database, right? So that's exactly what I did, right? The following weekend, I was browsing through Facebook, and I saw a post from this guy. If you're looking for the best event space in Asia, check out this link. So I clicked on it, and it was on my website. <laughs> <laughs> he basically passed um, the database to a new competitor that created the same thing as us, and uh, he's basically doing consulting for them for a lot of money. So this is what I said to him. You were my brother. How can you do this to me? <laughs> when, when you're doing business, you're bound to come across a lot of opportunities, right? Some of the opportunity can be really attractive and you probably make a lot more money than what you're currently doing, right? So this is around nine months into the business. We're, we're getting some traffic, but revenue was okay. And this guy, this intelligent guy, I met this intelligent guy at the bar. So when you meet someone at the bar, don't do business with them. <laughs> <laughs> he, pitched, he kept pitching his idea. He bought all my friends' drinks. He, very intelligent, very smart. Billion dollar idea, right? He was like, you know, Ricardo, I need you in this team. I am making a superstar team, and you need to be in this. All you need to do is put in a little bit of money, and com commit some time. I was like, uh, I'll think about it. I, to be honest, I, I didn't believe him. I smelled his BS, and I didn't put in the money. But some months later, I did. I decided to put in the money. <laughs> I, de I decided to go dark. Right? So why did, why did I do it? Well, he managed to get a VC to come in. And then he got a very famous radio presenter to become the face of the company. And then he got a banker to invest as well. So for me, I was thinking, wow, small amount of money makes sense. I can make returns within a few months. So I did it. Anyways, it didn't go well. Um, we didn't, once we sent all the money in, he disappeared. <laughs> he was using fake name, fake ID, and everything. So the lesson here, always eat cookie from the light side. So after working hard, forgetting about the incident and re feeling really bad um, about putting the money in, um, I got approached by another friend after one and a half years. It's like, hey, you know, I met these two really, uh, you know, talented people from Malaysia. You can expand. You should expand. You shouldn't wait. So I was like, wow, Venerific going global. One and a half years. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> So we met the guy, we interviewed them, we did all the background checks. You know, they were you know, superb, perfect, talented, but we couldn't afford them at the time. So we offered them um, equity for Malaysia business. So we went ahead, we trained them for six months, we gave them all our trade secrets, our vision, what we're gonna do in the future, what functions we're gonna build exactly in details. And unfortunately, they were building the same website as ours. And they, they, they created a similar site. So we wasted a lot of time and money. The last, this is the last problem that I'm going to mention to you. As your company grows, you're going to face different kind of problems. You will learn from all your mistakes. And um, this time around, it's going to be attacks from inside your company. Right? So it's stuffing. I'm going to give a... a good example of uh, this particular case of my head of sales. Basically, um, he was doing well in the beginning and then suddenly the sales started dropping. Right? He started slacking off. I can see it as well. And then one day um, I confronted him. He's like, hey, what's going on? Like, How come we're not making any sales? Zero sales this month. Right? So he's like, okay, okay. I'll, I'll work harder. I'll make sure I'll, I'll get the sales in. We come into work the next day, everyone's typing away, doing work, and this guy is doing this. The whole day, looking at the screen. So I was thinking, wow, he must be thinking of a strategy for us. Right? <laughs> so I come back to work again tomorrow, still zero calls, zero emails, just doing this. Watch, he's like, oh, I'm watching something, um, I think I can learn something from this. 
right? Sales didn't come in again, second month, and then third month. By the end of third month, we cut him off. But to be honest, three months waiting with no sales can cost you the business. So, so sometimes you have to make that non-emotional decision to cut someone before, you make, before it costs you the business. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Sorry, I was a bit nervous in the beginning. So in summary, uh, number one, be ready to be critical, <laughs> stay focused, expand at own, your own pace, and cut when necessary. You don't have to be a Jedi to win wars or build successful businesses. Han Solo didn't believe in the force. He still did his fucking job, right? Thank you for your time. Okay, so some really hard lessons learned along the way. Well, you know, but I'm glad that Benjamin Refik is still, you know, in how many cities now? Four cities now, you know, so that's quite something. So uh, we want to do a bit of Q&A. If anybody has any questions, yes. I was wondering what you learned about reading people, having met all the interesting people that you have met through your stories. So now when you meet somebody and someone offers you a new opportunity, quotes, uh, how do you, what kind of questions do you ask to make sure that they are Number three, stay focused. Don't stray. Um, be loyal to what you're building. So whatever the opportunity is, I think if your baby is not running by itself, you shouldn't be doing other stuff. Okay. I have a question. Do you have trust issues now? <laughs> Definitely. I, I was very nice, a very nice guy when I came up, came up from corporate. So now I'm a bit careful. <laughs> We get testimonials from friends of friends and then we check out what, what school they go to and how they perform. Um, and then other than that, past portfolios, past work that they did as well. And so you will cut someone off on the first line, this is a third line. Oh, this one because I got quite close to him as a friend. So I, I felt emotionally attached. I didn't want him to be disappointed. Did you understand why the end did I did, but it's uh, quite personal reasons, so I don't want to mention it. If you had to do this all over again, what would you do differently? I will try find a mentor to uh, avoid all the costly mistakes and the slowness in growth. I could have grown the business a lot faster, so I wasted the first year basically just drinking. <laughs> Sorry, three months. What's your favorite bar? <laughs> I used to go to uh, Pan Pacific a lot. <laughs> bang bang. Now? How do you go now? No, I don't drink anymore. about success or failure changed over time? Um, when I was working in corporate, I was thinking, you know, I just want to make a lot of money. But actually, after you start working, building your own business, you start to have different beliefs. Um, I felt that being successful, being rich is not important anymore. I just want to contribute to the world and make a change. So I meet a lot of business owners, and uh, it really, like, my passion is to really help them get the events uh, so that they can make revenue and survive and grow. We can all grow together. That's what I want. Come on, congratulate Ricardo again. <laughs>